Good evening, everybody. There is sound. Type in a quick yes if you can hear us. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, that is great. It's amazing to see so many of you here. Uh, wait for just a couple of minutes more because we see people coming in. We have close to 500 of you that have registered. So we want to give folks just a couple more minutes to join in as well. So for those of you who are here already, uh, thank you. A uh, couple of housekeeping things as you're coming in. Obviously, you all are using the chat box, which is wonderful. Uh, you will also see a Q&A option as well. As we go through the presentation or at the end of it, we have a section for questions and answers, and we would love to hear any additional questions you have at that time too. Hi, right, Justin, we're going to start in just a minute. We have close to 177 people now and about 500 of them have registered. So we're just giving people a couple of minutes to join in too. So hi, Carol. Uh, yes, so you can type them in. Uh, because we have so many people, unfortunately, it would be hard for us to be able to have everybody speak. Uh, we'd love to have people share your input, but please type them in. Uh, if it's just a comment, uh, please do so in this chat box. If it is more of a question, uh, please do so in the Q&A portion as well. Uh, some things as we can, we'll answer along. For the others, we will have a Q&A component for everybody else at the end of the presentation to be able to respond to as well. So I'm gonna now invite Suzanne Wolf, the Director of the Community Services Department to help kick us off this evening. Good evening, welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for our very first Parks and Recreation Master Plan Community Meeting. My name is Suzanne Wolf, and I'm the Director of Community Service, Services and it's an honor to be with you this evening. The City of Fremont's Community Services Department uh, includes the divisions of recreation services, park maintenance, landscape architecture, which is our parks planning and design team, and environmental services. Together, these divisions strive to improve the health and wellness and quality of life for all Fremont residents. Tonight is the first of three virtual public input meetings to gather feedback from residents. They will be the same meetings and open to the public to seek and engage the Fremont community while obtaining their input through questions and public comments. Our next two meetings will be held on Saturday, August 8th from 10 to 11 a.m. and Wednesday, August 12th from 10 to 11 a.m. For registration and to provide additional comments for the virtual public meetings, please visit www.inventfremontparks.com. With that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our master plan and what is a master plan process. We are embarking upon a journey to create a new comprehensive Parks and Recreation Master Plan for the first time in 25 years to provide guidance on how to meet the demands for future recreational programming and maintenance needs, as well as to establish priorities for facility improvements, future park development, and land acquisitions for the next 15 to 20 years. 
Fremont residents are invited to join in the process as the city wants to hear from all ages in our community, what you love about Fremont parks and how you would like to recreate in the future. So what, is, what are the outcomes that we hope to achieve tonight? We have five of them we wanna share with you. One is we wanna maximize engagement with our diverse community in an extensive, innovative and inclusive manner. And again, all of you that can join us, we're really proud to have you on this evening. We wanna integrate the learnings of CAPRA. And, and, and what is that? That's our National Commission for Accreditation of Parks and Recreation Agencies, known as CAPRA. And it provides our quality assurance and quality improvements of accredited park and recreation agencies throughout the United States. And it gives us the system of best practices to use. Achieving CAPRA accreditation is one of the best ways to demonstrate that we in Fremont are providing you, the community, with the highest level of service. We're also looking to ensure the diversity of offerings of equity and access in our community. We're in, we are inspiring to find a, and enable action to create a world where we have safe access to a quality park or green space within 10 minutes of walking home by 2050. Mayor Lily May is one of our 78 mayors in the 11 Western states to sign on to this vision of equity and safe access for all of our, in our community. We will shape the financial sustainability through next practices in order to have a financial plan that really helps us to identify how we're gonna implement the goals that have been identif identified in this plan with realistic and very clear financial goals set for the master plan. And finally, we wanna develop a dynamic and realistic strategic action plan. Again, this is not a, a site specific plan where we're showing you the footprint of the building or the parking lots or how our sewer lines are gonna work, but it really will help us create a visible statement of where parks are now, where they should be in the future, and what is required to get there. By the same token, a, ma a master plan can call attention to the park needs and assets and help the Parks and Recreation Department determine the highest priorities from the community with the funding identified. With that being said, it is my honor to introduce to you our leadership team that is one of the greatest I have the privilege of working here in Fremont with. Our Deputy Director Overseeing Administration is Kim Baronic. Welcome, Kim. And let me introduce Roger Ravenstad, our Parks Planning and Design Division Manager. Juan Barajas, our Park Maintenance Division Superintendent. And our Master Plan Project Coordinator, our Manager, Tara Buthamithi. In addition, I wanna thank Recreation Supervisor Anisha Mistry and IT Genius Convo as they're behind the scenes tonight to help make this community meeting happen. With this, we'll be answering some of the questions through the question and answers section this evening throughout the meeting. But for those questions that need to have us answer, my team will be back at the end to answer the remaining questions at the end of the meeting. Since we haven't updated our master plan for 25 years, we worked hard to find a firm that understood our global community here in Fremont and one that would work closely with us to listen carefully to the Fremont community. After a nationwide search for the firm best equipped to create a comprehensive master plan with us, the city of Fremont hired Pros Consulting Inc. to help us with this effort. Nile Bhatt is the vice president and principal of Pros, and he is a leader in his, in his industry and has extensive experience working with public agencies all across the country in California, especially to create parks and recreation master plans throughout the entire state. He has a diverse and international background, having worked for the likes of Disney, the Olympics, Super Bowl. In your spare time, feel free to look up his TED Talks um, um, from the TED stage on YouTube. Joining Nile on this project is a team from San Francisco-based WRT and ETC Institute from Kansas City. With us this evening is Abby Granberry from WRT, who will co-present with Nile. Thank you both for your leadership and helping us engage the community in this most inclusive and innovative possible manner, given our, where we are with COVID-19 in our community. With that, uh, we look forward to hearing your values and what you have to share with us this evening to all of you in Fremont. And now I'll turn it over to Nile Bhatt to get us started. Thank you again, Nile. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Abby, as well. And thank you to the 245 and counting 
uh, attendees for this evening's meeting as well. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things as we get started. As I said in the beginning, you will not be able to uh, speak during the webinar, but we would love to hear from you through the chat box, through the Q&A as well. We're gonna have a number of live polling questions that we'd like for you to be responding to as we go along. And at the end of this, we will also have, as I said, a Q&A portion for you to engage with us too. So we recognize there's a lot of you and you have a lot to share. We're gonna go through a brief presentation, but before we do that, we would love to do a quick poll with you and get a sense of who is it that we have in the audience with us. So let's take a quick look here with the attendee demographics. I'm gonna launch a poll. There are multiple questions here and keep going through each one of those and answer. You should see five questions as you scroll down going forward. And I can see as you're responding, so keep going as you see all of those, great, 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 keep responding. All right, I see. Why are a few of you responding? Almost 150 so far, keep going. All right. Getting there, almost 200 of you have answered. This is fantastic. For those of you who might be calling in, the questions are about your age segment, the segment of age segment of people living in your household. If you are a resident of Fremont, and if so, how long have you lived in Fremont? And then if you have other people on this with you as well, and if so, how many more people are there on the webinar with you? Okay, going once, going twice. I am going to end the polling. Oh, I see a few of you now at the last second come along. All right. Yeah, I'll give you still a few more seconds. We'd love to hear from everybody. Please scroll down to all the questions. There are multiple questions. Till you scroll down and choose submit, it will not record your answers. Okay, great. Let me end the polling now. And I'll share the results. So take a look. We have the majority, about half of you are in the age of 35 to 54, quite a few 18 to 34 and 55 plus as well. That's the majority of the age segments, but a number of you also have young kids in your house under 18. Most of you are Fremont residents who lived here from anywhere from five years to 30 plus. And almost one in three of you have one or more people with you on the webinar, fantastic. All right. so. Just a little background on us as well and who we are. Uh, as Suzanne mentioned, I am principal with Pros Consulting. We are based in Indianapolis, but at least till March of this year, we were traveling all over the country and internationally working on parks and recreation master plans uh, and again, helping agencies like Fremont plan for the future. So just in the last few years, I've been really fortunate to work on plans for the city of San Diego, Los Angeles County, Malibu, Pasadena, San Jose, Gilroy, uh, Pleasant Hill, Walnut Creek, just really rough places. Nobody wanted to leave Indiana in winter to go to California, so I had to volunteer to do that for the team. Uh, but we're very glad to be leading this process, and I have with me our colleagues from WRT, 
I'll have Abby introduce herself too. Hi there, everyone. Hi, uh, my name is Abby Granberry and I'm an urban planner and designer here at WRT. We're based just right here in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're a national design firm that focuses on all things landscape architecture, planning and architecture. And we have a long history of incorporating ecological aspects and an equity lens into our work. We've worked with pros and Miele for quite some time and we're so excited to be here working in Fremont with all of you. Thanks. Yes, before I had any gray hair and any kids, Abby, and the number of gray hair is directly proportional to the two kids that I have. Uh, at the same time, to also help with the statistically valid survey portion, we have a company called ETC Institute that's based in Kansas City, and they conduct statistically valid surveys for parks and recreation <laughs> agencies all over the country as well. And we will be doing the same in Fremont in English, as well as up to five other languages as we go through the process later on. So just a quick body of work. These are just some of the examples of places that either Abby and WRT or we have worked and led just in California in the last five years from San Jose, San Diego, LA, Lodi, Chula Vista, as I mentioned. And similarly, nationwide as well, this is just a sampling of some of the gold medal and the best of the best agencies that we worked with from Chicago, to Canton, Ohio, and Michigan, to Durango, Colorado, Virginia Beach, and of course, Fremont. Uh, Suzanne alluded to CAPRA, which is Council or Commission for the Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies. It's an extremely prestigious thing to be a part of, and uh, Suzanne and the team in Fremont are aspiring to go for that. Just to give you a sense, right now, uh, out of about 12,000 park and rec agencies, less than 200 of them are actually nationally accredited. So that's the group that Fremont's looking to join in and this master plan is a critical component of being a part of that. Along with that, we worked with over half of all national gold medal agencies. So that's sort of the experience and the expertise we wanna help bring to this process. So what does the process look like, right? In a very brief high level snapshot, this entire master plan over about 15 to 18 months is gonna be broken into three main phases. One, where are we today? Two, where are we gonna go? Three, how will we get there? You all are going to help us identify what to do in these first two phases. Where are we today? The existing conditions, the situation assessment, and your vision for where you want Fremont to be in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is going to really help shape the vision and the priorities. And then working with staff and us, we will help ensure that we put that in an implementation plan, identify funding sources, partnerships, et cetera, for it to then become a living, breathing document and to eventually be implemented. So in general, our entire approach to this, where we look at things, physically and philosophically is about going where people are. And in general, we would have loved to do this in person, but as every one of us has pivoted, we're looking at doing this virtually too. And the first aspect of us to do that is by creating a multilingual, fully ADA accessible website for the City of Fremont's Parks and Rec Master Plan. You have the URL at the bottom. Please bookmark that, save that on your phone, wherever you can, uh, inventfremontparks.com. This has all the information you will need and as we develop the plan, all in one place. All the future public meetings, every technical report we develop, the summary of the plan. We want this entire process to be transparent and to be developed in front of you. So we don't want any of you to have surprises when you get to the end of the process. We'd rather hear your feedback now and act on that as we go forward. Right. Speaking of feedback, we've already, as you can see, met a number of focus groups and different user groups as well, all through virtual meetings. At the top right, I met uh, a lot of the future of Fremont yesterday as well, as we looked at uh, the youth and teen advisory groups too. And I know a number of you are on the call today as well. So we will continue the process. 
And after this, I am super excited to show you for the first time uh, an app that we've developed as well called Happy Feet uh, that is in several states across the country, but Fremont will be the first city in the entire West Coast to actually implement this as a part of the master plan. So that's tremendous. So if you could, even as we speak right now, uh, go to the App Store, go to Google Play, download Happy Feet Fremont Parks. And what it allows you to do is based on your GPS locations, publicly or, or anonymously, share feedback from any park, any trail, picnic shelter, pavilion, restroom, et cetera, for things that you love, you like, or you want to improve. You find something that's great, that just made your day on Lake Elizabeth, great, tell us about it. You found a lot of geese poop and you want staff to fix it and address that, let us know about that too. But we would love to keep hearing from you through these mediums, so please continue sharing your feedback as we go along, because this is really where the community input will drive the actions that we take. Hey, speaking of community input, uh, we're gonna do some quick questions to see how well you know your Fremont community. This is where I'd like for all of you to go to the chat box actually, and tell me what you think is the estimated current population of Fremont. Type in A, B, C, or D in the chat box right now. Vijay says A, Ami says C, Kirk says B, Rajesh says C, Karen C, I see lots of A's and C's. A few Bs as well, or oh, you're going too fast for me now. <laughs> uh, this is great. Okay. So the right answer is B, 230,962, uh, growing to over 263,176 going forward. Let's look at one more. A, B, C, D, or E, which one do you think is the largest age segment in Fremont currently? How many think it's under 17? How many think it's 18 to 34? I see lots of C's and D's, some B's as well. Ooh, this is great. Okay. And the right answer is right now, it's 35 to 54. So those of you who got that right, pat yourself a little bit, but not for long, because as you can see, that's the group that's shrinking the most, while the blue and the red bars, that's the 55 plus and the 75 plus, is the one that's growing the most, and it's projected to be one out of three people in Fremont in the next 10 to 15 years. By race and ethnicity, you know it's an extremely diverse community. Suzanne spoke to this. Our largest group and growing significantly is what the census calls as the Asian population. And within that as well, as we break it out, these are the different groups that make up the distribution. The two largest groups are currently, or based on the last 10 years, the Chinese and the Asian Indian population. That's gonna get flipped in the next 10, well, it's flipped right now, and it's gonna continue moving in that direction as well, uh, with about 43% Asian Indian, 31% Chinese, Filipino, other Asians, a large Afghan population as well, Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, and so on. You, of course, know this as well, uh, extremely well-educated, uh, highly qualified population, uh, much higher than national and California averages, as are the income levels as well. Uh, so those are some of the quick demographic characteristics. All of this data is obtained from a source called ESRI, which stands for Environmental Services Research Institute. And they look at census data from 2010 and project that going forward. The tough thing is this is the longest or the furthest away we are from the last census and the current census data won't be available to mid to late 2021. So this is as accurate as somebody can get, but next year, these numbers will be updated as well. Uh, trends, we also looked at what's called SFIA, Sports and Facility Industry Association, that tracks the major sports activities, fitness, wellness, outdoor characteristics. 
and then quantifies them into what's called MPI. That's Market Participation Index. What it basically says is if the national average is 100, if you have a higher than average participation, whatever percentage that is, is what's qualified for that particular interest area. So here you can see soccer and tennis, for example, are 23 and 21% higher than the national average of 100 here as well. Now there are other sports that, you know, for example, lacrosse, pickleball, cricket, et cetera, that they haven't been tracking yet. So not to say they're not popular, but in terms of the national averages, they haven't been tracking those. From a fitness standpoint, needless to say, you are an incredibly fit and active community. Uh, every activity from swimming all the way to Zumba is anywhere from seven to 37% higher than national averages, which is fantastic. Uh, and I'm sure these numbers are gonna be even higher uh, as we think in terms of where people are right now with the pandemic and the limited activities we have, especially for things like jogging, walking, biking, et cetera, too. Same for outdoor activity as well. Uh, hiking, biking, road mountain biking as well. All of those pieces are certainly much higher. Some of the others, not so much. So moving on from understanding trends about Fremont, I also wanna share a quick poll and get your input on park usage, which is how are you and how often are you currently using any of the city parks, the facilities, not the same way, but think of pre-COVID for the parks and facilities and share your input for how often do you use them. Great, half of you done, more coming. For these polls, please answer this in the actual pop-up box that shows up, not within the chat box, please. That way we can track everybody's information here and not in the chat box. Only for the demographics, I wanted you to type in an A, B, C, D, or E out there. Okay, 10 seconds more. Yeah, Alok, uh, Anshu, good point. A lot of you, Satya, you mentioned daily as well. Absolutely right, uh, which is great. Again, you know, if you, if you use a daily, fantastic, put it in. We'll update that in the next survey questions too. This is great. All right, so majority of you say weekly, and I think looking at the chat, a lot of you probably use it daily as well. So that's great. Some monthly and a few times a year, fantastic. I'm gonna have Abby talk to you a little bit more about the work they are doing as well with respect to park access and so on. Great. Yeah, so as Neela mentioned, Fremont is absolutely, it's truly a magnet for people from around the world. Uh, I think that this slide really indicates that it's a city of immigrants in a lot of ways. There's nearly 50% of the population was born outside of the United States. This map is a dot diagramming showing concentrations of where people were born. Uh, so we have large populations from China, from India, and it's really this melting pot. And so we're really starting to think about how this could be influencing our park planning process. And what is this amazing cultural um, melting pot gonna bring to Fremont and how can we make that shown in the built environment? Next slide. Next slide. So we also really want to know how people are getting to your parks. Um, so if you, if Neelay can get the polling question. So a lot of people go daily. How do people get to your park? I see some people are do both. So they're walking and biking, that's great. Um, I'd say just cho choose the one that you use the most. Use the poll feature, you don't type in the chat, chat box, box if you can, can please, unless, unless you don't have a way to type in anywhere else. else. Sorry. Uh, 
right. How are we going on the responses, Nile? All right, so this, this makes a lot of sense to me when I think about uh, when I've looked at the census data and sort of how people are moving around, six, over 61 or 61% of you are driving to parks. Um, as indicated in some of the chat windows, that's not the preference. There are people, people want to be able to walk and bike to their parks, but they are needing to drive because that's the only option. So, thank you so much. Next slide. So how many people in Fremont do not live within a 10 minute walk to a park? Uh, Suzanne had mentioned earlier in the presentation that that was really the metric that we're, we're striving for. And it'd be great if people could answer in the chat box, what's the estimate uh, that people think? See a lot of E's, D, E, A, C. Oh. All right. Too many, too many messages for me to see, <laughs> but it's sort of all over the place, ranging from A to E, which is quite a few. So, um, yeah, so it's it's seventy two thousand people live with that that are not within a ten minute walk of their home to a park, which is a huge part of the population in Fremont, and that means a lot of different things. It has a lot of negative uh, consequences. So one. There's mental health issues that can come as a result of this. There's physical health issues. And then there's also environmental health issues. So people who are living outside of a 10 minute walk are more vulnerable to heat waves, flooding, and other extreme events. But what does this look like for Fremont? So next slide, please. So here you see the 10 minute walk shed that uh, PROS and WRT have put together for Fremont along with a population density. Uh, this is based on um, census data and also uh, walkability from the street network. And you can see large portions that are in the pink and this darker pink, this darker red, that are outside of any close by park. And this leads me into the analysis the WRT has been performing, which is really this, this exhaustive document looking and mapping all the conditions across Fremont. So we're looking at both the citywide scale and the individual scale. You can see some of it here at the Fremont Plays. So we've mapped out all the playgrounds, all the exercise areas across Fremont. We've mapped out all the sports courts. And it's really just taking this snapshot in time so that we can then assess what we need to do later on. Next slide. So it goes from both the citywide level, but also down into the individual parks. So we went to every single park in Fremont and documented every single asset, 104 different types. We documented 9,566, um, geolocated them and assessed their condition. These are just three different categories of the assets, but we have a, a huge repository of what, what Fremont is like in 2020. Next slide. And here's an example, and this is one that was brought up in the, um, in the chat box. So here's a, a park by park analysis of Sylvester Harvey Park. We're noting not only the assets that we do have, but also what's lacking in that park. So what, what kind of surface treatments are around the edge? What don't we have in this park? Um, so this is just looking at what is there. Next slide. And then this is assessing its condition. So it's also saying, so of what we have, what needs to be replaced immediately, what's gonna mean, need to be replaced in five to 10 years and what's in good condition. Next slide. And why does this matter? Because we're looking at all of Fremont as a whole and how we're distributing these assets. So here, this is, we haven't done this yet for Fremont but we're looking at, this is a San Clemente in California. And so on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the, the, the playgrounds across all of San Clemente. And it seems to be fairly equitably distributed throughout the city. On the right-hand side, then you see indoor recreation space and there's some significant access issues with that. So based on a whole bunch of different metrics based from just the national trends, but also the things that are Fremont specific. So I've seen a lot in the chat window about cricket. 
That's maybe not something that we bring up in other planning communities in California, but it may be something that we bring up for this planning effort. But we need to know what you all want so that we know what to equitably distribute. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. And I saw a number of comments in the chat as well about why we break a track. Believe me, if I could, we definitely would, but nationally, uh, they look at this based on growing sports, and I have a feeling based on the way things are trending. SFIA will probably start tracking that in the years to come. Uh, but as I like you're, you're, you sound like you're underwater. <laughs> it's right. the only problem. <laughs> Yeah, let me, uh, you sound a little uh, bit like a frog. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me try right back. Thank you everyone for your patience as we, we sort through this virtual engagement process. <laughs> and Nile will be back shortly. All right, everybody, can you hear me now? Much better. Yes, fantastic. Oh, uh, you love technology. Uh, <laughs> all right, so as I was saying, if, if I could, we would definitely track this nationally. It is on track to be captured, I hope, given the way it's growing. Uh, but for Fremont, as Abby alluded to, we absolutely want to hear more about things that are specific to Fremont, whether it's cricket or whether it's any other sport as well. So a uh, few other things with respect to your input uh, with methods of communication. So I'd love to hear from you uh, in terms of how do you currently get information about the city of Fremont and Expand the chat box, there's multiple options, and there are two questions here. The second one is pre-COVID, what prevented you from participating more often in the parks, programs, facilities, events that the city offered as well? So tell us how you hear about us, and then tell us what prevented you in the past from participating more often. Great, see a lot of responses coming in. So far I see word of mouth and social media being the top two ones. Regirec and the Rec Services websites, fairly popular too. Great, give you 30 seconds more. More social media, word of mouth is definitely the biggest one by far. And these are multiple choices, people, so you can choose more than one as well, or as many as are applicable for you. When it comes to barriers, that's interesting. Uh, the number one thing is the program times are not convenient. Hmm. We'd love to hear from those of you who did say that. If you can put it in the chat box, if there's a specific program or a specific time that is not convenient for you, type that in the chat box as well. We'd love to hear more about that too. Okay, I still see about 200 of you have responded, but 75 more to go. Great. So 
Okay. Let's look at the results. So you can see by far the number one, 48% of you said friends, family, word of mouth was the number one way in which you got information about the city's programs and offerings, which makes sense. We all sort of you know, rely on that as well. Uh, the next three are fairly close, next four actually. Social media is pretty high, 39%. 34% for rec services website and regirec. 34 for the city's publications, 33 for print material, and 32 for emails and e-blast as well. Great. Number one, uh, program times not convenient was about 34% of you said that. And then tied closely is 28% said, I don't know what's offered uh, or too busy, not interested. So that's great. We will move on as well now to the next one here. And this is really, I, I want to have you start thinking about the future. This one is a, is a critical one as we think of multiple polling questions here, yeah? as I share this one. Uh, so think of things that you currently do have, but need to be improved. And also think of things that you don't have that you'd like to add. And what I'd like to do when you get to some of those as well, we have options for other, if we haven't mentioned something specific. For those, I'd love for you to type in the chat box, just type in other and type in whatever your choice might be. Each of these are multiple choices. There are uh, four questions, so take your time. This is the last of the polling questions, and then it'll be open-ended for your input questions and discussion as well. So take your time. This is really helpful for us. And as I said, if there is something we haven't included because we're limited to 10 choices, please share that in the chat box with us as well. Also, I see some, a lot of you were choosing sports, for example. So if there's a specific sport you'd like to also mention as a part of that because we're including a wide variety, by all means put that in the chat box as well so we know if you have any specific preferences too. I see a lot in the other. I see pool and splash pads. I see cricket. I see basketball. I see kayaking. I see pickleball. I see swimming, open space, and hiking. I see lots of cricket here. Softball, photography, stand up paddle boarding. Bathrooms, a master swim facility, great. Natural areas and open space and interpretation. Thank you, Susie. Mia talks about walking paths. Justin says swimming. Asha talks about cricket. Raj Ahuja talks about tennis courts. Ashish Mehta, Shrikulti. Virendra, a number of you talk about cricket grounds and facilities. Denise talks about a dog park. This is fabulous, people. This is great. Satya talks about more in terms of reservations to a lot to specific groups versus just the facility itself. Pavan talks about indoor facility for tournaments, volleyball, badminton, wrestling, fencing. Karen talks about environmental stewardship. 
B talks about adult language classes, Mandarin especially, great. Nanette talks about bathrooms, Prasanna, indoor outdoor cricket, Dominic, pool. Ah, oh, this is great, people. Keep them coming. I've got about 215 of you. I'll give you maybe half a minute more or a minute more for those of you who are responding since we have multiple questions and this is really critical for us. Gretchen talks about educational historic park maintenance. Great. And more accessible to students and classes for education. Paris talks about swimming pools for Fremont residents. Janet talks about history and nature tours, scavenger hunts. B talks about hiking trails. Harish talks about soccer. Vimal Khalapa talks about lighted tennis courts, badminton, indoor facilities for sports, movies. Kathy talks about an indoor pool, kickball. Great. Stand up paddle boarding. I'm trying to read as many different ones as well that we have here. So I'm not just repeating the ones that have been said. Uh, Shashi talks about more pedestrian bridges across Alameda Creek. Uh, Laura talks about a lot of new developments are fenced off, should be able to walk to them to get to other areas. Margaret talks about upgrading existing facility center at Lake Elizabeth. Great. Ooh, that's a lot of feedback. I love it, people. Keep them coming. All right, I am going to take one final look here at the polls. Okay, give you a minute more. I still see people responding to the poll questions. Shirley talks about movies in the parks. Surya talks about a special needs facility. Surya, can you elaborate more in the chat box what you mean by that as well, please? What are some specific things you might be thinking of or wanting in those facilities? Janet talks about historic orchards and classes on fruit trees. Denise talks about a path to gated community to access Mission Peak. Great. Rose Garden from D. Rajiv Tadani talks about cricket. Dylan talks about a bike park. Tons of people have been buying bikes. I, I have too, as well as my family, so I can see that. And we'll want to use them. Closest ones we have are in Navarro, San Jose, and Pleasanton. Anj talks about cricket coaching for kids and encouraging women's cricket. Great. Uh, Monica talks about bike storage at parks as well, so just more amenities for people that do have bikes, more bike paths. Rajesh talks about that. Great. All right. Going once, people, going twice. I am going to wrap up the polling here. and share the results. So let's take a look. Uh, by far, in what are the following program areas you and your family are most interested in, all that apply? Number one was sports, and as you saw, a number of different options. Cricket came up a lot. Um, soccer, basketball, kickball, a number of other things, as well as biking, uh, bike lanes, nature programs, environmental conservation, that's great. Uh, Community-wide special events and dance, fitness, and health came up pretty high, too, as did rentals and music, art, and cooking. From the existing park and recreation services, what should receive the most attention? Just the sheer number of parks and, and focusing on those, uh, closely followed by park maintenance and maintaining and upgrading, I'm guessing, what you have. Uh, some other options closer to that are new facility and amenities. Speaking of which, what are some new facility amenities you'd like to see? I think in the other, I read a lot about different turf courts. I read a lot about the pool as well. Uh, I see the pool coming up pretty high in here, 
26% talk about community gardens too. And the number of different options, including pickleball, which is uh, one of the fastest growing sports in the country in the last few years as well, along with esports and in specific parts of the country, uh, cricket too. Uh, in terms of rating our indoor community recreation space, I know one of the uh, uh, audience members mentioned that the current uh, space at Lake Elizabeth needs to be upgraded. I think about 20%, 21% of you say they are somewhat a very sufficient, uh, about 34% are neutral, uh, and then about close to 45% either want to improve or need a new community center. So this is great feedback, people. Thank you for that input as well. Just know that this is only the beginning of the input process. So from here on, what we're going to have are the next two virtual public meetings, exact same format. So don't feel that if you all come again to the next meeting and share the same feedback that it's gonna be more important. We'd love to have you come as many times as you want, but it's gonna be the same format on August 8th and August 12th from 10 to 11 a.m. as well. We've taken a weekday and a weekend. Based on all the input we're gonna get from these virtual public meetings, I've met every council member, the mayor, the council, all the city staff, the department heads, and multiple focus groups. So the input from that and the public input meeting input would all be aggregated to then create a survey instrument. Now that's the most scientific uh, and representative data set we're gonna have. In any public meeting, anywhere in the country that we've done it, there's always gonna be a certain interest group that advocates for what they would like, which is understandable and expected. But at the same time, we want to ensure that the feedback represents the demographics of the entire city, of users and non-users, and your wide demographic. That's what the statistically valid survey is going to do. So sometime in September, October, uh, this is going to be a random, anonymously mailed one. So some of you might get it, all of you might get it, none of you might get it. We don't know, but if you do, please fill that out. We will certainly be emailing everybody and letting them know that this is launched. Now, for those of you who do not get it, we'll have an identical survey also on inventfremontparks.com. So we're gonna have that as well on the website for any of you to go online and take that survey on the project website too. And once we aggregate all that information, then we get into the part that Abby mentioned with the level of service standards and then the equity mapping. So through the end of the year, we're gonna complete all the public input, assess all the parks, facilities, amenities, also assess the recreation programs and events, document your existing service levels so we know where you might be deficient and then map them on equity maps to also be able to show gaps and overlaps, whether it's for a 10 minute walk to a park or the absence of a certain type of facility or amenity uh, in any part of Fremont, let's say North or South as well. So all of those pieces will continue happening. And then next year in the first quarter and the second one, we will aggregate all this information to then create a priority, a vision for the future, funding sources, as well as what funding looks like and implementation looks like. Bring all of that back to you so you can have an input in that before we actually submit the draft report and then the final to the council for approval and adoption. So stay tuned, this is first of many to come. And we will now turn on our cameras and switch over to the open-ended questions that you all have as well. Nice. So I'm going to go through the list of questions that we have. And from that point on, we'll just go through those uh, two. Suzanne, do you want to talk about? Oh, I just want to mention that there were quite a few questions in the chat box, and I'm currently going through the 69 pages of, of chat so to try to find them. Um, and don't worry, all of your all feedback from this meeting will be incorporated into the master plan, and we will be getting back to each and every one of you. So we may not be able to reach it today, but don't worry. And as for so that, then you want to talk about the population and the crime rates? 
Um, just to share that we are working diligently to open our new housing navigation center for the homeless and working to really understand how to do a housing first policy in the city of Fremont to support um, those that are unhoused into housing so that we can then support them for any other services that they may need in their community. So we are working diligently with both the police department and our human services department to work through these issues collaboratively. Thank you for that question. Yeah, great. So I'm combining a couple of these. Uh, what, what I hear as well is uh, Jenny mentioned about why should the city of Fremont be a part of the capital accreditation and what advantages does it provide to the city and its residents? That's a great question, Jenny. So a couple of things here. One, the process of being accredited requires 152 standards to be completed. Many of them are mandatory, including having a master plan. So just by virtue of pursuing CAPRA, the city is now able to complete a number of these plans. And typically what we've seen is money follows a plan. So if you want to build a number of the things that you want in the city, having a plan, looking at accreditation allows you to then seek funding as well as a part of that. And as the mayor's vision, as Susanna and the team's vision to continue making Fremont a world-class city that attracts people from all over the world, uh, being one of the only 200 agencies in the entire country to have that is also a pretty prestigious thing by itself. So thank you, Jenny, for that question. Uh, I see a couple of notes on cricket grounds and crickets. So Manoj point noted, Suresh, we got that as well. Thank you very much. Um, question from Amy. Will the current pandemic affect the plans? Are you considering how to create spaces that people can use whenever the next pandemic hits? For example, ch children cannot use playgrounds currently. Are there any innovative thoughts for designs of play spaces that can be used while social distancing? I would just like to add that I'm really appreciative that honestly we're doing this in a post COVID-19 experience so that we can really find ways to be creative and um, creative in a way that we can really find solutions that will support a long-term strategy for our community here in Fremont. That's a great question and we're pleased that we can now incorporate all of these various solutions into our master plan. So uh, Paris, yes, there is an email as well. Uh, if you go to the project website, inventfremontparks.com, you will see the contact information on the contact us page. And there's also an open-ended comment box where you can share your information as well. Uh, Devendra, the max capacity of dialed on users is up to 500. Um, Karen has just asked about, what about the issue of climate resilience? Will the park and rec master plan address this issue as well? How will this issue be addressed? For example, trees provide carbon sequestration, native plants can be drought tolerant and reduce the needs for watering. Um, I think I'm happy to answer it if, if you all are not. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, so WRT is one of the leaders in the in climate resilience in the Bay Area. We do a lot of work around sea level rise and also moving away from car dependent communities. Uh, so really trying to address climate change and climate resilience from a multi multitude of factors. And that's definitely something that the Atlas is considering. We definitely welcome um, any input on ecology and ecological concerns specific to Fremont. So just put them in the chat and we'll definitely be incorporating that into our plan. Um, I'm just scrolling. Suzanne, do you want to speak to the city of Fremont not allowing uh, the ponds to maintain and run Sabercat Park, and they have restored the park before and can do it again? Um, I don't, I don't see that question. Hold on. Uh, the Tulip Pond. Like, um, so I think at this point we would look at all possible options to consider for maintenance and maintenance strategies that are going to help us create the most effective um, well-maintained system in the city of Fremont and uh, we're looking for all creative solutions and ideas that come through the master plan process and so 
we will take all of these comments and um, uh, include them as part of our thinking as we move forward. Yeah, um, Abby, do you want to speak to the environment and naturalist personnel on your team? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not the only one on our team. <laughs> we also have several landscape architects and climate specialists that are working on this. So people who have been working on the Bay Trail, uh, Christina Behrano, uh, Diksha, um, Rawat, and Atisha um, are all, I have a big team behind me that are all working on all of these uh, issues on all across the Bay Area, so. Great. Uh, Sanjay has another question as well, Suzanne, about invasive dandelions and blackberries at Stivers Lagoon. Yeah, I would ask Roger Ravenstad on our team to answer that question, if he can join us on the live chat. Thank you, Suzanne. Yes, um, Stivers Lagoon is an ongoing challenge for us to fight invasive species, just not only in Stivers Lagoon, but throughout our park system. Um, our park staff does an excellent job with what they have to work with, and we're always exploring new methods to uh, combat the old problems that stay with us. Uh, Devendra, uh, we will not be asking funding right now during the election process. It's too soon to know what to even ask for funding. Uh, so we'll plan we'll plans of increasing so cricket facilities, plan? actual turf wickets, and more cricket grounds. So that's part of this. Roger, we're going we're gonna to mute you on this chat if we could. There we go. There you go. All right. So, uh, yeah, they're in the funding. Uh, not yet. It's too soon to ask about it. But uh, once we have the plan based on your input put together, then depending on where the city council wants to go, where the staff recommends, uh, we'll be looking at multiple funding sources, both from the city as well as exploring public-private partnerships and other creative funding sources. Uh, Shailesh, for Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you discuss the previous master plan and what were the deficiencies and improvements you were planning to address as part, in, part of updating this master plan effort? You well, want to? The former <laughs> the, plan the, was done 25 uh, who, Google wasn't invented. So I think right there, <laughs> we're in a very different world. Uh, the population was, you know, 70,000 less than you have now, a lot less global as well. So, I mean, really, at this point, we almost see this as a brand new plan. And typically, the best practices indicate, and if you look at CAPRA and national accreditation, you actually have to update your master plan every five years. So the goal after this plan is to update the plan every five years as you go forward so it continues to reflect changing trends, needs, demographics, and frankly, you know, economic conditions and, and where we are right now. That's great. Does anyone want to add anything more? Or? No? There is one more question that's a really good one to end on, I think. Uh, what would be ways for Fremont residents, how Fremont, Fremont residents can help with the master plan besides giving input? I think showing up to these meetings is really, really important. And that's, yeah, I think the making sure that you're an active participant in all of these meetings, that's the best way to, to give this input because we're actively listening to you. This is directly going into the master plan. And I think we should all share with our friends in Fremont what other folks would like to be participating. Perhaps tonight you recognize some of your peers or colleagues or neighbors that would really like to be involved in this. And in addition, we also see our, this is an opportunity for future involvement in our parks and recreation system, whether it's volunteering or um, creating new aspects of our, our master plan as it moves forward. So we really welcome you tonight into this process and know that it's an ongoing conversation. Great, so just as we wrap up, being mindful of everybody's time as well, uh, we want to thank you very much. And Suzanne, if you want to just wrap up for everybody, that would be great. Great, thank you again, all of you for joining us this evening. If your comment wasn't answered or we aren't able to get back to you, please know that we 
would encourage you to visit www.inventfremontparks.com as we're taking continual feedback throughout this process. Do download our Happy Feet Fremont application app as we are excited to hear from you at park specific locations throughout the entire city and what you love about your Fremont parks and what you're looking forward to in the future. Again, we look forward to seeing you uh, or your friends and others on August 8th, uh, which is our next community meeting at 10 a.m. or on August 12th at 10 a.m. as well. So thank you again for joining us this evening and we really appreciate all the feedback that we've received this evening. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And I just have to add to Suzanne's point that this is by far the highest attendance in a public meeting we've ever had. So kudos to every one of you in Fremont for being such an amazingly engaged community. Uh, we'll do everything we can to help make your vision a reality in, in the most realistic way possible. So thank you very much. So yeah, woohoo, Fremont! <laughs>